I like your idea. My big fear is that uh, it would decimate the Republican Party, and I think a lot in the Democratic districts, I think a lot of them would get in. And I don't think uh, this is the right time uh, for your uh, plan. But I, I should that, that's my feeling. I think we hurt the wrong people. Okay, so, so thanks, John. I hope everyone heard the question. Is now the right time? Uh, but I would say, as our founding fathers risked their lives and their fortune to build this great country, there was about 97% of the people in America early on that said this was not the right time to create this nation. We have soldiers like Jason Denham, a Marine, over in Iraq, and the grenade comes rolling out on the floor. He took his helmet off, threw his helmet on the grenade, and then his body and blew himself up. And he did that for the people there, and he did that for you and I. He did that for freedom. It's time that we stand up and fight for what we believe in and not kowtow to the two parties and say, now it's not the right time, we'll do this in two years. We can no longer wait. All right, we have somebody over here with a question. I'll get you next time. No, no, no. All right. Here's Bob Morales, Peace and Tea Party. Uh, I think the problem, I don't know how, what you consider about gerrymandering. How do you fix that problem? What do you think about it? Is it fixable to go to a new system? Is it possible to go to a new system? Who's the question? Uh, Joe, you want to handle that? Sure. This is one of the biggest problems we have today, that you can design these artificial districts by computer and Republicans are re protecting Republicans because they're getting more Republican votes in the district by computer. The same with Democrats. It's kind of like, you know, I won't fight you if you don't fight me. And that's why less than 50 percent, excuse me, 50 seats out of 435 are competitive today. Look what happened to me when I tried to come back with the Lowy, Governor Cuomo, a Democrat. And this was two months before the race. Imagine, after 10 years, I still don't know what my seat is that I'm going to run in because they had to do this political manipulation. And I find out two months before that they put a third of my district across the, the uh, Throgneck Bridge. It went for uh, a mile, a block wide, till it got to where Nita Lowy and Cuomo did their business back then with the Democratic Party, Hollis Hills and, and Forest Hills. So I had to go then to a place that I never did any visit with. This is what's going on in America. It was done because it had a political objective, incumbency. People want to stay in. Now, you know, term limits. We tried to get it there, it didn't work. But you know, our founding fathers didn't see a couple of major things. One, a balanced budget amendment was not put in the Constitution. It should have been there. Very difficult to get it. The other thing is term limits. They couldn't have imagined, because their idea was that it was kind of a a citizen situation that you'd go to Congress, represent your, your neighbors, and you'd come back. It was basically a part-time job. But now we've got this incumbency. How do you change it? It's like, how do you change everything else? The people have to speak up. They have to get angry, and they've got to change it. The way you change it is you have to target some of these seats and, and get people out. I don't know that you can do it overnight, but I think we can change it, because it's not fair. Uh, my name is Ed Magliola from the Wetfield Marine Group out of Suffern, New York. I respect the gentleman's opinion that he doesn't think it's the right time. But by God, if, if it isn't the right time now, it will never be. Exactly. I have a question. I have, I have a question for the panel, if I may. Uh, we have we have two senators in our state right now, uh, Senator Schumer and Senator. Uh, Senator How do, we, how do we get these rubber stamp senators out of office? Mr. Cox, I'd like to have you at answer that question. Our founding fathers were brilliant men. The Senate was intended to be the seasoned elder statesman. And they gave us this government so that we wanted to act and act quickly, we could retake the House of Representatives. That's why every single House comes up for vote every two years. I think we're, we're in a battle. It's a long-term battle. Uh, I like to say this is a chess game. What we're doing right now is moving the first few pawns. We can get all 435 seats this year if we get to 500 
thousand members, and as soon as we do, we will put tremendous pressure on every senator, and if they do not change the way they behave, we'll go after the Senate then in 2012. Look at what's happening now, as we speak to this Senator, Gillibrand, that was not elected, she was appointed, she was appointed by a governor that came in because of Smithson. And now you have Schumer saying to his own party, don't run against her, we don't want to weaken her. That's not America. She's got to show that she can compete. And we need more challenges, and we need more elections to get the best people and the best ideas. And she's also traveling throughout the New York State with a, a self a self-devout communist party by Van Jones. So there you go. So this is what we have to be attuned to and try to change it. And uh, hopefully I'll do something about it. Okay? Because I expect to jump that. Uh, Bill Barker from Harriman of Garnes County. Uh, I'd like to thank Mr. Uh, uh, Romanowski for his comments. And I'd like to just uh, tag on to that. Um, like it or not, we do have a two-party system in this country. Uh, there is no Tea Party, and if there was, all that would happen is that it would lead to the conservative vote being split between the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. Uh, in line with this, I believe that the way to have our voices heard is through the party structures. I believe that if half of us would take the opportunity to register as Republicans and run for Republican committee seats, and the other half of the Tea Party movement would register as Democrats, no matter how distasteful some of us might find it, and run for Democratic committee seats to bring the Democratic Party to the right, more so than it is now. I believe that way we would have more of an effective voice internally, because like it or not, it's internally that the decisions are made on who the nominees are going to be. Thank you. Sir, in the middle, right there. You got the microphone? Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Oh, yeah? Okay. Um, my name is Steve Esco. I'm an independent from the Bronx. Uh, I have two quick questions. One, Mr. Cox, I don't remember hearing your um, uh, URL, so if you put that out again. G triple O H dot com. There, there's also books over there. Uh, yeah, there's a table over there. You can get information. But go dot com, G triple O H dot com. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Diaguardi, uh, I have a question for you. Um, I, my old stamping grounds crossed. I was born and raised there. You know, Westchester in Well, I'm not going to make this comfortable for you. I'm sorry. Just being <laughs> um, There's nothing comfortable when you're in Congress. Believe <laughs> Barney Frank and, and Chris Dodd are responsible for the for the um, housing bubble uh, crisis with uh, the CRA and um, and uh, uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Uh, and I read your very impressive resume and see that you come out of Arthur Anderson and Company. 22 years ago. Who was also uh, on the other side of the issue uh, with the collapse of, I think it was MCI and Tyco, um, if I remember right. I don't remember the company. Enron. That was Enron. 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 Long after my time, don't forget. Okay, I, my time, well, it's in, the, it's in the resume, and I just wanted to be fair, sure. make sure that the vetting was complete. Yeah, but let me, let me say something about that. You want to talk about prosecutorial, uh, tutorial humorous? Arthur Anderson, 50,000 jobs were lost. They should have gone after three partners yep. in Texas, not the firm. They consolidated the industry, and when they went to the Supreme Court, Arthur Anderson won 9-0, but the firm was finished. It's one of the greatest firms of all time. A firm, um, it was called the Marines of the Accounting Profession. That's where I learned government, government accounting and private sector accounting because it was Arthur Anderson that was hired in 1975 to unbundle the screwball books of New York City so we could see whether or not they were entitled to a bailout. I was one of the young partners put on that team. That's where I learned the gimmicky kind of accounting that they use in government versus the private sector. So let's not bury Arthur Anderson. They did their job. No, no, no. Okay, sir.